Continuing on physical chemistry chapter 5, we are beginning section 7 now. Now we can talk about conventional entropies and the third law of thermodynamics. First of all, let's define conventional entropy, which is the same as relative entropy or absolute entropy. Now remember the second law, it let us find changes in entropy, the delta S. Now for a reference state, we have to uh, re reference state chosen. It's the pure element in its stable liquid or solid form at P naught is equal to one bar and the limit as temperature approaches zero Kelvin. Now remember, we said solid or liquid because there are no gases at zero Kelvin. Now of course, zero Kelvin is unattainable. That's why we said it can't be T equals zero Kelvin. It's the limit as te temperature approaches zero Kelvin. So that's why we have to take a limit because we can't actually do it. So this gives us the standard, the molar entropy in the standard state at zero Kelvin. is the limit as temperature approaches zero of the molar entropy at whatever temperature in the standard state. And that's equal to zero. And this was set arbitrarily. So remember, like I said, zero Kelvin is theoretical. It can't actually be achieved, although quite a few people have tried. The change in entropy is equal to the, the molar entropy at T2 in the standard state minus the molar entropy at T1 in the standard state. So we have decided, okay, by definition, this T1 is going to be zero by definition. So we're going to have the change in entropy is the integral from temperature 1 to temperature 2 of the heat capacity and constant pressure divided by temperature with respect to temperature plus, of course, the change in entropy due to any transitions, if any. So we have S0 is just equal to S molar 0 is equal to 0. So absolute entropy at absolute 0, 0 Kelvin, is 0. And this is true for elements or for compounds. So the uh, molar entropy at 0 Kelvin in the standard state for water is 0, the molar entropy and standard state for oxygen, well, it wouldn't be gas, it'd be solid, but it'd be equal to zero. That brings us to the third law of thermodynamics. The first statement of the third law of thermodynamics, the entropy of all pure, perfect, crystalline substances is the same at T equals zero Kelvin. That's how Max Planck worded it. Now, the second statement of the third law of thermodynamics, as temperature approaches zero Kelvin, the change in entropy for all reactions approaches zero. Now, this is the, how it was um, stated by Simon and Nernst. Now, this is only true if the substance is at internal equilibrium. In other words, not some weird unstable form. Now, let's talk about allotropes of sulfur. There's the monoclinic and the rhombic. So here we are, not an, our vertical scale is not absolute entropy, it's the distance in molar entropy between um, two, T and O. I don't know which is which. Should be like monoclinic and orth and rhombic. So anyway, so here's, and then here's temperature, increasing temperature. So let's start over here. We have the monoclinic version, allotrope, of sulfur up here, and we have the rhombic version down here. It's lower entropy, so, it, well, based on this only, we would say it's more stable. So there is a difference between the two. That's what this difference is over here. There's a difference in the entropy, <coughs> excuse me, of transition. Okay, I see. This, this is supposed to be absolute entropy, reference to the zero Kelvin. That's what I meant. So... As you can see, at lower and lower temperature, they get, close to get closer together. And at zero Kelvin, they come together. This, be, this difference becomes zero. Not this difference. This difference is the one up here, the vertical scale. So I probably should have done that here. So remember that's zero Kelvin. And that's the temperature there. So the more stable form down here, rhombic, it has less entropy. This is assuming this is not super cooled. Because if, if we have a super cooled liquid, well, these are solids, obviously, but if we had just like a super cooled liquid or whatever, then it's not in the equilibrium state. 
Now remember we showed before how the partial derivative of the Gibbs free energy with respect to temperature is at constant pressure is equal to minus the entropy. Therefore, we can also say that the partial derivative of the change in Gibbs free energy with respect to temperature holding pressure constant is equal to the negative of the change in entropy. Now the change in entropy is just going to be the entropy at T2 minus entropy at zero. This is the entropy at zero kelvins. That's what the zero means. So we have the integral from zero to T2 of Cp over T dt. That's supposed to be capital T. It's kind of ugly. All right, so we have the partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature holding pressure constant, and that's equal to um, Cp over T. Did I miss something? Okay, I guess that's okay. So, we're going to integrate that. We're going to have integral of the molar. Oh, no, this is, this is an integral from T2 to 0. So it's going to be the integral from 0 to t. Yeah, this is an s, not an integral. Ah, can't read my own handwriting. Okay, so we have the um, molar enthalpy in the, at t2 in the standard state. It's going to be the integral from 0 to the temperature of fusion. Remember, fusion means um, melting, not nuclear fusion. The, heat, the molar heat capacity of the solid over temperature with respect to temperature plus the change in enthalpy of fusion, or the heat of fusion, divided by temperature, plus the integral from the temperature of fusion to T2. And that's going to be the, C, the molar heat capacity in the standard state of the liquid form, divided by temperature with respect to temperature. Now here's the problem, though. Since we can't actually get to zero Kelvin, we can't actually in, evaluate this first integral over here. Now, um, by the way, Debye is the unit of dipole moment, but that, in case you've heard of Debye. Debye's theory from statistical mechanical theory says this, that the molar heat capacity at constant pressure in the standard state is roughly equal to the molar heat capacity at constant volume in the standard state, which is roughly equal to A times the temperature cubed. Now, this is only for nonmetals, and this only works at very low temperature. A is specific to the substance, so this is called Debye extrapolation. So what we're going to do, oh wait, and then for metals, it would be the, heat the molar heat capacity at constant pressure in the standard state is roughly equal to the molar heat capacity at constant volume in the standard state. And that's roughly equal to A times T cubed plus BT. And this is for metals, and this is also only relevant at very low temperature. And B is also a constant, and this is due to the conduction of the electrons. So we have the entropy, the molar entropy at whatever temperature in the standard state, is equal to the integral from zero to temperature of um, the molar heat capacity constant pressure in the standard state divided by temperature with respect to temperature, and that's going to be the integral from zero to whatever low temperature of the molar heat capacity at constant pressure in the standard state divided by temperature with respect to temperature, and then we'll add the integral from that low temperature to whatever other temperature we needed of the molar heat capacity in the standard state divided by temperature with respect to temperature. Now remember, to evaluate this integral from zero to T low, it's going to be the molar heat capacity in the standard state divided by temperature with respect to temperature. That's, oops, oh wait, this, sh okay, this it shouldn't be there. We're evaluating this integral here. So it's going to be the integral from zero to T low of A times T cubed divided by T dt. So we're using Debye's theory for a non-metal here. That's the substitution we just made. So A is constant, it's specific to the material. So we pulled out the A from the integral. So we have 0 to t low of just t squared. Remember, one of the t's canceled out. So evaluating that, we get A over 3 times t cubed from 0 to t low. So that's going to be A over 3 times t low cubed. 
and that's going to be equal to the molar heat capacity and the standard state of the low temperature divided by 3. So here's a graph showing the heat capacity at constant pressure against the natural log of temperature. So here we are, these dots, we couldn't get to absolute zero, so we used to buy theory to extrapolate it. And then we have measured values here. If you integrate underneath the curve, that is your absolute entropy. Now, the, from a calculus, integral calculus, remember the Simpson method of integration. The area is going to be the sum of all i's of y of i plus 4y of i plus 1 plus y of i plus 2 divided by 6 times x of i plus 1 minus x of i. So that this basically, if we don't actually have a function of this, if we have the data, we can at least um, do the area under the curve this way. So let's say we have liquid helium evaporate. We're going to get down to 1 Kelvin. If we want to get even colder than that, we have to use adiabatic demagnetization. But of course, to do that, you need a paramagnetic substance. Um, as of a few years ago, at least, the record was getting down to about 20 nano kelvins. Now see handouts uh, 21 and 22. Oh wait, and then using nuclear spin, the record, it, we've actually, somebody's gotten down to two nano kelvins. Millimicro, yeah, nano kelvins. So here's a graph of heat capacity divided by temperature against temperature. So this is a substance going through solid, liquid, and then gas. So over here we have the dotted line extrapolated from absolute zero. The notice from the solid is continuing to go up. Then at the melting point, it goes way up over here. Then uh, moving to gas, it actually moves back down. And then over here, it continues to increase more. But you'll notice the area under the curve here excuse me, is um, entropy, absolute entropy, based on how we define the reference state. Now here we go. This is actually a graph of entropy versus temperature. So as you can see, higher temperature, the entropy increases. Then of course, when you're melting, it increases quite a bit. And then when you're boiling, it increases more. And it's always increasing with temperature. So then we have the molar entropy of T2 in the standard state. It's going to be, OK. The molar entropy, enthalpy, yeah. the molar heat capacity, constant pressure in the standard state at the very low temperature divided by three, plus the integral from the low temperature to T2 of the molar heat capacity, constant pressure in the standard state divided by T dt. So the molar enthalpy, the molar entropy in the standard state at temperature two is going to be equal to the molar heat capacity in the standard state for the low temperature divided by 3 plus the integral from T low to T fusion of the molar heat capacity at constant pressure in the standard state for the solid form divided by T dt and then the enthalpy of fusion or the heat of fusion divided by the temperature at the melting point plus the integral from the temperature of fusion to the temperature of vaporization and that of the heat capacity, the molar heat capacity of the liquid in the standard state divided by T dt, plus the heat of vaporization divided by the temperature of the boiling point, plus the integral from the temperature of the boiling point to T2 of the molar heat capacity in the standard state of the gas phase divided by temperature with respect to temperature. So this shows all the little steps you add up if you're going from absolute zero all the way to the gas form. Now let's talk about the standard entropy of reaction. The standard, the chemical reaction standard, so the change in entropy and um, temperature in the standard state, is just going to be the sum over all the substances i's of nu i. Remember, um, nu is the stoichiometric coefficient. It's going to be positive for each product and negative for each reactant of the molar entropy in the standard state at that temperature, a substance I. So it, 
Oh, excuse me. So it's just like the equation for the change in enthalpy. So we have the derivative of temperature, the derivative with respect to temperature of the change in entropy at that temperature with respect at standard state, and that's equal to the derivative with respect to temperature of the sum, that's going to be over substance i, of course, you don't really have to specify it, but anyway, of nu i, the molar entropy in the standard state at the temperature of substance i. Therefore, we can say that the change in the entropy of state 2 minus the change in entropy of um, temperature 1 with the standard state is going to be the integral from temperature 1 to temperature 2 of the change in the heat capacity in the standard state constant pressure divided by temperature with respect to temperature. Of course, this assumes no phase transition, and this is the same derivation that we used for the uh, change in enthalpy. And then the um, tables, they usually have 298 kelvins in tables. And then the change in uh, um, enthalpy at T2 minus the change in enthalpy of T1, all in the standard state, that's going to be the integral from T1 to T2 of the change in um, heat capacity of the standard state at constant pressure, dt. See handout figure um, 23. That's the end of section 7.